All right, hello everyone. Uh, going to uh, finish off this amazing conversation uh, with Dr. Baumgartner, who is got the, who is the author of South to Freedom. Uh, again, I'll show you. Please, oh, let me get my camera. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Please um, get this book um, and and also go back and, and revisit if you haven't uh, the previous conversations that we've done to to get uh, more depth on this. Um, her research, the process, the methods of organizing the scholarship and, and sources, um, and also maybe some ideas for others to think about when uh, considering um, new projects, because there was some of that amazing conversation as well. So this final um, question are, is really just one for those who, are, who have not read um, your work, which they need to, in my opinion. So for those who are thinking of new courses, myself included, uh, whether they be undergraduate, graduate, or both, uh, in the Civil War era, uh, why would you say that they consider this book? Um, or you can even go beyond Civil War, you could say FAM history, I mean, wherever you'd like to go with that, but why they should consider adopting your, your exceptional work. But then also um, for the general history buffs and readers, and I say that because of the way in which the book is written really allows itself to be written by, or sorry, read by a broad audience, so. Well, maybe I'll start with that second question. I wrote this book in order to have it reach an audience that was not just academics, that I really wanted my family to be able to read it and enjoy it. And as my mother said, it's not for your neighborhood book club, but if you're a history buff, maybe it would be for your neighborhood book club. Um, so I really hope it is accessible to an undergraduate audience that could be assigned in an introductory survey. Um, uh, tried to have narrative and characters to make it read more easily and be more accessible in that way. Uh, I think there are a lot of different courses in which this book could fit because it has a toe in a, a several different fields and is trying to connect a couple of different fields. So obviously Civil War history is part of a big part of this book. And I think that assigning this book can help to move a civil war class from the usual military history, political history, to actually be able to include a broader lens, including Mexico, including the enslaved people who escaped to the South. And I hope that it will help to make it clear to students why something like the Wilmot Proviso was so important and so disruptive, even though it wasn't ever actually passed. Right. I hope that it'll make sense of why Southern states felt so, in, so threatened by the threat of freedom, because it wasn't just in Canada or the Northern states, it was also to the South in Mexico, where slavery was of course, or where threatening slavery, where it was expanding in the Mississippi Valley in Texas. So, Civil War history is a big part of this book. African American history is also a big part because one of the major threads woven through this book, which is of course a lot about politics, but it's also about the lives of enslaved people, the ways in which they were able to escape to Mexico at great risk to themselves, crossing really inhospitable territory in Southern Texas or escaping by sea from New Orleans. Um, and so this is really a story about their escape and the, the lives they were able to forge for themselves in Mexico. So I think this has a lot to say for African American history as well, Mexican history too, that yes. a lot of the scholarship both in the United States, uh, but even in Mexico is about slavery during the colonial period and the large assumption is that slavery basically was abolished because it no longer existed in Mexico. And uh, I found a very different story looking in those Mexican archives that slavery was declining in Mexico, but remained important both in the Mexican province of Texas, what would become Texas and Southern Mexico. Yes. And that presented all sorts of problems to abolition mm -hmm. in ways that really complicate the story that we usually tell about slavery in early national Mexico. And finally, of course, this is a, this is a borderlands history. This is a story of um, people crossing borders. And one of the contributions I think it makes to borderlands history is that borderlands historians, and I count myself as a borderlands historian, are often 
you know, what, what is the significance of these peripheries to our broader understanding? Yes. And I think this is circling back to what I started with, Civil War history, that we really cannot understand the coming of the Civil War without taking into account abolition in Mexico and the enslaved people who are escaping to Mexico. And so at its heart, this book is making the argument that the peripheries are hugely important to and influencing what is happening at the center of the United States. Yeah, I think, uh, as you say that, I'm just writing myself a note, to, so I never forget this as well, um, is that this borderlands history and the way in which what you're talking about and many other scholars do as well is recentering and focusing on the periphery is a better way, is actually the way we're going to understand the, the story of what's happening in these other locations. So it tells a more fuller, inclusive story, um, a more accurate, you know, in many cases, because and you know, many, as you point out, and we've talked about throughout this conversation, the reactions of the United States to what Mexico is doing, the reactions of African Americans to what Mexico is doing in the United States. So it's also a reactionary history, and and uh, and a ways in you know, it, which it's also for those who are doing um, military history. Uh, I think that this, and I say this because um, you know, that's it's important to acknowledge that this is there is aspects of military history in this as well um, that that deserve to be it should be acknowledged. Uh, that this is also for those that do the gender, race, and studies um, or American studies, like this fits into this as well, because you talk about so many different aspects of, of citizenship, of, of race, of you talked about racelessness through legislation, that it, it, there's some theoretical concepts that it, it connects to things I thought about as we talked with graduate school, that it's, this is a great book. Um, this is a, and, and I just want to affirm that this is a book that I, believe should be considered for an introductory course, uh, whether we're talking to survey, as you said, but particularly a survey for African-American history, because it will, I envision that it will challenge what students may walk into a course thinking they know. Um, and myself included, when I read this, I thought, well, what, I'm looking for the USCT in this. And little did I realize, oh, it's so much more. And it was, it was so masterfully written. I think that's why this is, you know, when you say your mom said that this isn't for, for a book club, I, I think it, depending obviously on the book club, it, this is, you know, one that could be read by a multitude of people um, that either just want to know more, um, maybe are looking for genealogical history about their families, because you're also bringing in that if we go back to Albert's story and his family um, and, the, and the navigating they have, but also just those interested in the Civil War in ways that they hadn't fully considered as well. This is this is an amazing book and one that I'm going to have to go back and look at my, at my work and the way in which I write to, is it, is it accessible? Um, because I think that's important that scholars, we recognize is it's one thing to, to do the history. It's another to write it, but it's also another thing to write it. So people will read it and can understand it beyond just students and professors or those who have an interest in it um, for academic purposes. Um, so I encourage libraries to adopt it. Um, I encourage, people and it's also let's be clear it's affordable right like I think that was when I looked at when it was released I was like oh this is not the eight you know or a hundred dollar you know for a hardback uh, and to be clear I get nothing off of these sales I don't I wish I did but I don't um, but I just say this because it's 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 great uh, and I'll just leave it at that uh, just real quick because your work is so informative and you know you know a, a wide array of scholars as you previously mentioned were there any other recommendations that you have either so we're on the lookout for new scholarship that's out there or even some classics that um, we, myself included, because I'll be writing these notes, should consider um, to learn more about, you know, elements of what you've talked about in your book. Well, Andrew Torgett's book, Seeds of Empire, which came out, I believe in 2016, was really informative to me to understanding Mexico's anti-slavery mm. movement in the first half of the 19th century. It's an amazing book who, that really deeply entrenched in archives in both Mexico and Texas. There are also a number of people who are doing really exciting work about enslaved people escaping to Mexico. Right. So Maria Esther Hamak, who is at UT Austin, yes. is finishing a dissertation. Um, Sarah Cornell, who's at UMass Amherst, is also working on um, a book about uh, sort of comparative race in, in mm -hmm. the South and Mexico. And I've been really uh, just benefited so much from reading her work. Um, 
uh, Michaela O'Dan, who is uh, at the College of New Jersey, is also working on a book about enslaved people escaping to Mexico. Really excited to read those. So we have a lot in right. the pipeline right. because I think that this, as we've been talking um, throughout this conversation, which has been so enjoyable, uh, there's so much to be done yes. on this topic. Um, so I'm really excited. Uh, and fully recognize that that they will be uh, correcting and and my work and helping to really help us understand this this part of history that has really been largely overlooked mm. um, up to this point. Oh, and I would be remiss. So Rosalie Schwartz has a great monograph from uh, I believe the 1960s about um, fugitive slaves escaping to Mexico. Sean right. Kelly has a great article about it. So there, I, sh I shouldn't be saying no one's written about it because people have right. um, in ways that are, you know, there, as, as we all historians know, there's nothing truly new in right. history. Right. Like people have written about it before. But I think it's exciting that you're, you know, there's, there's, there's classics, but there's that this new wave, which you're part of, right, of, of reconsiderations of how it's been talked about or hasn't. Uh, been talked about and I mean to be honest this is exciting so I'm, I'm definitely on the lookout for those new scholars and feel free to reach out because I would love to learn more about their work and yours and again I just want to thank you for your time thank you for doing this very important study um, and just thank you for pushing me and hopefully others to to reconsider the ways we discuss teach and and talk about black freedom and citizenship well, thank you so much for this really thought-provoking conversation. I really enjoyed it. You have a great day.